Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the speed control of DC motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic, speed control of DC motor. Now we will see the expression for back EMF so that we can able to identify what are the parameters related to the speed of the DC motor. So the back EMF given as P pi n divided by 60 into Z by A. By rearranging this we can able to find the expression for speed n equal to Eb into 60 into A divided by P pi into Z. Right? The 60 and A, A is multiplied in the right hand, in the left hand side numerator. P pi Z is multiplied in the denominator in the left hand side so that we can got the expression for speed. So in this this E B and pi is the variable one. This 60 A divided by P Z, these are all constant. Number of pole, number of parallel path, number of conductors, these are all constant. It will not vary. So that we can take it as a constant K. So that N equal to K into E B by pi. So it is depends upon only the two variable parameters, back E M F and flux. But the back E M F is given as V minus I A R A. So that you substitute this value here so that n equal to k into v minus i a r a divided by pi. Now it is clear that the speed is depends upon these three parameters. One is applied voltage, flux and armature resistance drop. So by varying these three parameters we can vary the speed of the DC motor. So based on that we have three different methods. So by varying the flux is called a flux control method by varying the flux per pole. Second one rheostatic control method by varying the armature resistance RA this one. Third method voltage control method by varying the applied voltage this one right. So this flux control variable voltage control and armature rheostatic control these three methods are available. So in this we will see the speed control of a DC sent motor speed control of DC sent motor. The first method we will see the flux control method. The relation between speed and flux is n is directly proportional to 1 by pi. It is inversely proportional. Both are inversely proportional. By decreasing the flux, the speed will increase. So this method used for speed control above the rated speed. So up to rated speed, the voltage is varied. We have one method is that voltage, applied voltage. By varying the applied voltage, slowly the speed can be varied but that can be applicable only rated speed. We can apply only rated voltage so that the motor will rotate at rated speed. Above rated speed we cannot increase the applied voltage. We can apply, we can increase the voltage only up to rated, rated value. So if you want to increase the speed above the rated speed means we can go for this flux control method. How the flux is controlled refer this diagram. The motor is available. DC shunt motor. Why it is called shunt motor? This field winding is connected in parallel with the armature. In DC motor we have two important part. One is rotating part armature stationary part field. These two are connected in parallel that is why called a shunt motor. So this A1, A2 is the armature terminals. It is a field winding. By giving the excitation the, it becomes the electromagnet and flux is produced. So here our aim is to control the flux. In order to control the flux produced in this field winding, this rheostate is connected. The current is flowing through this rheostate. By varying this rheostate, we can vary the current flowing through the field winding. So this is the applied voltage. The current is flowing, load current. Here it is current is divided into armature current and field current. So at this position, the so maximum resistance is there. So only minimum value of current will flow. If the minimum value of current means the flux also minimum. If the flux is minimum means the speed will be maximum. So by if, we, if you reduce the if you reduce the resistance, the more current will flow, more flux will produce. If more flux means speed will reduce. So by varying this rheostate, we can vary the current flowing through the field winding so that we can vary the flux. By varying the flux, we can vary the speed of the DC shunt motor. 
so these details are given this method used for speed control above the rated speed by decreasing the flux speed can be increased hence it is called the flux control method how will you decrease the flux by adding the resistance so in this position the resistance is more current is minimum flux is minimum and speed is more flux can be varied by changing the current flowing through the field winding so that is done by connecting the resistor r in series with the field winding so the resistor is connected so that current is controlled due to the current control flux is also controlled so that we can control the speed of the motor when resistance of the field winding changes the current through field winding if changes and hence flux also changes so due to that the speed is varies right the speed is varied by varying the flux that is done by varying the field current that is done by adding the resistance what are the advantages in this method smooth and easy control is possible by smoothly changing the resistance using the rheostat we can increase or decrease the speed speed control above the rated value is possible that is a one advantage below the rated speed mean we are using voltage control method this method used for above the rated speed r of the field winding is high current if in the field winding will decreases so ish into rsh loss is external resistance is very low but already this uh, uh, this field winding is uh, field winding is very high or resistor value of field winding is very high so only the if in the field winding decreases so that we can able to reduce the losses this field current already is very less field current is very less so that due to less field current the external due to field, uh, the losses also very less this i square of r r of because this r of is i is very less because r of value is very high the resistance of the field winding is very high only already only very less amount of field current will flow some of the disadvantages available speed control below the rated speed is not possible only above the rated speed below the rated speed mean we need to go only the voltage control method pi can be increased up to the rated value above the rated value we cannot increase as flux decreases speed increases but high speed affect the commutation making the motor operation unstable so there is a limit to a maximum speed we cannot go with a maximum speed nearly the say 160 percentage of speed can be increased if it is 1000 rpm mean we can go up to 1600 rpm above that we can get the problem in the commutation motor operation is stay unstable so many problems will occur so we can go up to the maximum speed some limitations are available then we'll go to the second method armature or rheostatic control the second one is by varying the iara armature resistant drop now refer this diagram so this method used for below rated speed the supply voltage is constant and voltage across the armature is varied by pulling the rheostat in series with the armature we need to connect the rheostat in in series with the armature in previous case the rheostat is connected in series with the field winding now it is connected to the armature winding now see the diagram so this is the rotating part armature a1 and a2 this is the field winding stationary part previous case we connected the rheostat in the field winding now the rheostat is connected in the armature winding so by varying this we can vary the current flowing through the armature so by varying the ra ia ra drop varies hence the speed of the motor is varied because this ia ra drop also one of the parameter in the speed already we discussed the equation of the speed so the if the resistor if the if the rheostat position is put like this the full current will flowing through the armature if we keep on increase the resistance the um, the voltage will be dropped across this resistance the remaining remaining value of current only will flow through the armature so current will reduce so by varying this drop we can vary the speed of the motor right so in the previous case rheostat connected in the field winding by vary the flux field current here the field rheostat is connected in series with the armature in order to 
where is the IA RA drop, R major resistance drop. So the advantage is easy and smooth control. Easy smoothly we can vary. Potential divider can be used as a starter. So slowly by adding the resistor. Initially we can put the resistor in this place. We can put the maximum resistor. Slowly by reducing the resistor in by moving this, we can increase the current flowing through the armature and so so that it can be used as a starter. Initially, we can put the maximum resistance so that current will be minimum. By reducing the resistor, we can slowly increase the current so it will be acted as a starter. Some disadvantages available as entire armature current IA passes through the resistance so the power loss is very high. The full current is flowing through the real state. In the previous case field winding, the field current is already very less because field resistance is very more. So only less amount of current will flow. But here it's not like that. The full amount of current will flow, armature current will flowing through the resistor so that the drop power loss is more. IA is greater than IF. Large size of rheostat is required. So in the previous case, I already told IF is very less because R of value is more. So small, um, small amount of rheostat is enough. But here large size of rheostat is needed because IA value is much more greater than IF. Speed above the rated is not possible. Due to, due to power loss, large power loss, this method is expensive and less efficient and also power is wasteful. Need expensive heat dissipation or arrangement. More amount of heat will be dissipated. So we need to make a arrangement for a expensive heat dissipation. Now we will go to the third method, voltage control method. By varying the applied voltage, we can vary the speed of the motor. So this in that again two types available. First we will see the multiple voltage control. The field winding is connected to the constant supply. There is no variation in the field winding. Armature is supplied with the different voltages by means of switch gear arrangement. So by changing the switch gear, we can apply the different voltage so that for the given voltage, the motor will rotate at a particular speed because speed is proportional to this different voltages. Now refer the diagram. So this is the armature rotating part. This is a field winding. Constantly the supply is given. There is no variation in the field winding. The voltage applied to this armature is varied by this the switch gear. There are different voltage levels available. If it is connected here, the full voltage will be applied. So motor will rotate, start rotate. If it is connected here, only less amount of voltage will be applied, speed will be very less. So by slowly reducing the resistor, so by changing the position, the voltage applied to the motor increases, so speed also increases. Here speed is maximum, here speed is minimum. By varying this the resistor value, we can vary the voltage applied to the motor so that we can vary the speed of the motor. This is the first method. Second method, ward Leonard system is available. Ward Leonard system in having the three set of machines are available. This is the one of the method available. So this M1 is the motor for that we need to control the speed of speed of the motor. This is the machine we need to control the speed. This motor is the supply is given to the motor by the generator. One more generator is available. This generator is run by the another motor. So three different identical machines are required. All are with the same rating. Then only we can run this method. So this M1 is the motor whose speed need to be controlled. This motor, the voltage is supplied by this generator. This generator is run by the another motor. Now we'll see this M1. For this the field wind, this is the field winding of the motor M1 for which the speed is need is connected, need to be controlled. The field winding is connected constantly in the DC supply. There is no variation in the field winding. The voltage applied to this motor is from the generator the, that is varied by varying this field winding. The field winding of generator is varied so that we can vary the voltage applied to the motor. And this another motor is available for that also this field winding is connected at a constant speed. 
it's connected to the constant supply. There is no variation in the field winding of the machine M2. Now our aim is to give the variable voltage to this motor. So by giving the variable voltage to the motor, the speed of the motor can be controlled. How will give the variable voltage to this motor by connecting one rheostate field regulator in series with the field winding of the generator. So by varying this rheostat, we can vary the current flowing through the field winding so that we, we can vary the speed of this generator. When the speed of the generator varies, the voltage applied to the motor also varies so that we can control the speed of this motor. Right? So this field regulator is used to control the flux produced in the field winding so that speed of the generator as well as speed of the motor is varied by applying the different voltage. One more option is available is a reversible switch is there, reversible switch. By reversing the switches, the negative voltage will be applied to the motor so that we can reverse the motor, we can reverse the direction of this motor. So we can do two operations, one is speed control by applying the variable voltage, the voltage is varied by using this field regulator. And another one we can reverse the rotation of this motor by using the reversible switch. By reversing the switches, the voltage applied to be negative, so the motor will rotate in opposite direction. So the two operation is possible, speed control as well as reversing the speed of the motor. Now we will see the description one by one. So this is the motor whose speed need to be cont controlled. This is a motor generator set. So this is very sensitive method of speed control. So any small variation in any machine will affect. M1 is the motor whose speed need to be controlled. Field winding of M1 is connected to the constant supply. There is no change in that. It is constantly supply is given to field winding of M1. By applying variable voltage across armature, its speed is varied. By the variable voltage is applied. How the variable voltage is applied? Vol variable voltage is applied by using motor generator set. Similarly, the motor M2 run at constant speed. There is no change in the speed of the motor M2. The output of generator G is fed to the motor M1. How the voltage is varied in the generator? Voltage of generator is varied by varying the field regulator, field rheostat of the generator. So by varying the field regulator, the current flowing through the field winding IF varies, so that flux will varies. So due to the flux, the speed of the motor will vary, so that the generated EMF also varied. So that voltage is applied to the motor M2, motor M1. The direction of the field current can be reversed by reversing the reversing, reversing the switch, reversible switch. So which reverse the polarity of EMF generated and hence the direction of rotation of the motor M1 can be reversed. So one more operation we can reverse the direction of rotation of the motor M1 by using the reversible switch. So speed control as well as reversible is possible. There are some advantages and disadvantages available. So wide range of speed control is possible. We can vary the speed from minimum speed to maximum speed. Speed control can be done in both directions. That is very important. Reversing the uh, direction of motor also possible. Uniform acceleration is obtained because all three machines are coupled together. So that all three are identical machines. So the uniform acceleration will be available. But the disadvantage is arrangement is expensive. We need a three identical machines. To control one motor, we need another two machines are needed. Overall efficiency is low because we need to run one motor, one generator, then only we can control the motor M1. So the efficiency is less and expensive also. So in this video, we discuss about the what is the speed control of DC motor, what are the parameters and what are the methods. And we can discuss the speed control of DC sun generator. There are three different methods we discussed in this video. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.